Hey, and welcome to the first of a new series for myself. This is called Load Up Your Looper. I'm gonna give you a loop to play, and then gonna illustrate some ways you can think about playing over it. I'm gonna little dive into harmony, fretboard knowledge, developing ideas, creating ideas, playing over loops. Now, the loop we're gonna use, here's the tab of notation on the screen of it. It sounds like this. You can play it slower than I am. So that's an A minor going the root to then the remainder of the chord, so like that, with finger style. Then you play the A again. And that's one and two and, one and two and. Play the root on one, the chord, the rest of the chord on and. Leave two silent, then on the and of two, play the A again. So one and two and. Then I'm gonna use two triads, G. G in root position, G, B, D, and then D triad, F sharp, A, C in first inversion, so. That's it. Again, it can be slow or. Doesn't need to be that quick. Here's a loop I prepared earlier. And hopefully you can hear that, although there's three chords there, one of them is more important than the others, and that's A. That's no, if the progression was to finish, if you wanted to end the loop, you'd want to finish it on the A. It's the most important of the three chords. As a result, we're going to look at it from the perspective of A minor, and we're going to resolve to the sounds of A minor rather than other notes, which we'll come to. So I've got a list of things we're going to go through here, and there'll be some fretboard diagrams to help you explore this for yourself. But let's think about scales first off. The scale we're most comfortable with, well, most guitar players are, is pentatonic. Natural choice, A minor pentatonic. Let's be clear on that first. You can play that in positions all over the fretboard. You can play it on one string, two strings, three strings, however you want to. This is just how I've written it, and that's A, C, D, E, G, A. Then it repeats A, C, D, E, G, A. You can put another C on the top. One, three, five, the important notes. That's A, C, E. That's an arpeggio there. You can practice that in time on the beat. One, two, three, four. Just playing on the beat, and then, then two notes per beat. One, and two, and three, and four, and three notes, triplets. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Practice doing groupings. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And so on. That was A, C, D, E. Then go C, D, E, G. And then D, E, G, A. This is all good for technique. You can do groups of three. Lends itself to triplets. Alternate between groups of four and three. That's quite weird doing that one. Just get the make sure you can play it technically and in time. And then it's about trying to create simple ideas. Resolving to the A to begin with because it's the, the main key note. There it is. There it is again. Call and response soloing, maybe develop an idea. And again, slight variation. Resolving to C and E because they're notes of an A minor chord. There. Or the C's there. Or there. Finish on C. on an E. Hopefully you feel the pull of those notes and how it works to finish on. Because like, say if I try and finish on the note D, it just will sound unfinished. Listen. If I want tension, I go for that. The other note in the scale is a, a G. If we resolve to that, 
doesn't feel like it's finished. It feels like it wants to go. So you've got to get used to that. Start to feel that. Sing what you play. Don't always play the next note in the scale. You can make leaps. Oh, sorry, that's out of the scale. But I'm trying to pre-hear all this before I do it. Sing what you play. You can also play other pentatonics. You don't have to just stick to A. A good one is one bit off the fifth. I like using E minor pentatonic over A, which would sound like this. Benefit of using another pentatonic is it will bring in other intervals. In this instance, the ninth. Also includes our keynote, A. Blue scale would also be a great one, so take the pentatonic and add the flat 5 in and you have... Some tension. This note. Like if I play it, it sounds horrible on its own, but there's a note into a phrase, or in the middle of a phrase, it sounds great, like... Resolve these. Developing a rhythmic motif. Simple ideas, sing what you play. Now those those scales obviously have had five notes and then the blue scale's got six notes. Most scales have seven. Now, a good choice for playing over this loop, try Dorian, because it's got the note F sharp in, which is included in the D slash F sharp. So you might think, why not the A minor scale? Well, listen to an A minor scale against this. It doesn't sound awful, but there's that note, which is an F again, which doesn't work, listen to the F against it. it. Sounds weird. Why? Because because of this D slash F sharp, which has got an F sharp and kind of implies that this really is from like G major, because that's the the key which has F sharp and the key signature. A minor is really working here as a two chord, and for a two chord, Dorian is the natural choice, and that's a it's like a minor scale with a raised six. So instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, which is your regular minor scale, you have A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, then G, then A, and then another same octave of it. Yeah, and get it in time. Then try and create phrases with it. Bit of repetition. Next on my list, I've got thinking about, well, if you've got a scale like this, there's, there's chords within it too, right? So you can build a triad off each note of that scale from A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A. You get one through five off each one of those, like A minor, A, C, E, B minor, which would be B, D, F sharp, C, E, C, G, D, D, F sharp, A, E, E, G, F sharp diminished, F sharp, A, C, G, G, B, D, and then A. It's not that necessarily all of those sound great, but they're structures you can go for. They sound quite cool. I sometimes like to pick out a couple, like for this one, I think A and G would be good. Uh, there's G, resolving to A.
So it's a G triad going into A Dorian. Others would work too, but just you know, explore the different sounds. You can play them as as triads like. Next up on my list, uh, where we go? We could do four note chords as well in there if we wanted. We could add the seventh to each of those triads. Which would give us A minor seven, A, C, E, G, B minor seven, B, D, F sharp, A, C, E, G, B, C major seven, D, E, A, sorry, D, D, F sharp, A, C, that's a D seven, E, G, B, D, E minor seven, and then F sharp A C, which is F sharp minus seven flat five, G major seven, G B D F sharp, and then back to A minor. So I like the C major seven. Nice sound D seven. G major seven, E minor seven, well that E minor seven then G major seven then into A. Because those chords are built of stacked thirds, those ideas can sound quite strong because the thirds are very strong interval. So explore the chords, the triads found within your scale, whatever you're using, over the top of your loop. Next up, we have the idea of moving a semitone away just to create tension. So if we took the blues scale or pentatonic, say I've got this idea, just A, G, E, D, C, A, just down the pentatonic from A to A. Just move it up at fret, then back down. As long as you close off going outside, by going outside of me moving up a fret, then you can resolve back down. Just a, a simple little cool thing you can try with any melodic line like... went above and then you can also go below but again close it off by resolving to in key stuff um, other things I think at this point we've been playing predominantly just you know notes individually well we might want some texture you could take any of the things we've been doing and do them as say oh sorry the camera battery died on me there so next thing on my list is this idea of we've, we've played single notes so far predominantly so let's bring in some texture by playing more than one note at a time and we can do this through different intervals so like octaves take the pentatonic scale we can play it in octaves like Dorian as I'm slipping into other intervals like thirds, say if you take uh, Dorian in thirds, you have Fretboard two, six. Really nice sound, sevenths. So I know I 
miss that last one. I, I've I've noted down others you could do as well, you know. Um, but those those I think sound sound particularly good. Obviously, playing like triads. Uh, this is just A minor triads in, in inversions. Maybe G and A. Maybe the D as well. play other chords over like A minor 11, then A minor 9, combining with other ideas we've been doing. Uh, other things I think are really cool to think about is just kind of things which maybe you, know, you get so lost in trying to create ideas so you don't think about the way you play the notes but you've got things like where you pick we don't tend to pick there as a in jazz style, but you get a very different sound. How hard you pick? Whether you play with the fingers for a warmer tone. Take an idea. Say if we've got, you know, you could slide into the first note and into all of them hammer on in the middle then slide the last one play it uh, get louder softly all those techniques you've got at your disposal muting in jazz too often but my first bend was a bit off then it tends to be in a jazz sort of scenario most people don't particularly like bends or vibrato uh, you know the jazz police will probably come after you but Django Reinhardt one of my favourite guitar players used to do semitone bends quite a lot I think you can you can get away with those and, and not too excessive vibrato. Anyway, got to the end of my list. Give some ideas a go. Try and put this loop down for yourself, and just explore some of those harmonic options. Always trying to create ideas. Always trying to use your ear. If you've enjoyed today, let me know because <clears throat> I could make this a regular feature each month. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Have fun jamming. Any questions, any comments, any other suggestions for things you could do over this loop, then you leave me a comment below. Join me every Wednesday and Saturday for Jazz Guitar Lessons.